All right, so we're checking out a new GPS camera drone here. It's from a new company, at least one that hasn't been on my channel yet. This is a company called Exo, or Exo Drones, and this is their new Mini Pro um, under 249 or 250 grams. So it comes in at 249 grams. Obviously a folding drone like the DJI Mini. And um, this company is, um, I, think, uh, I think a lot of you guys that are concerned about uh, DJI being a Chinese company and data security and what they're doing with your data, etc. You're probably going to be very interested in this company because they are based in the U.S., I believe, in Utah, Salt Lake City, and um, they will not be selling any user data, any of, that, any, any of that kind of stuff, and then all of their data collection servers are in the U.S., of course, so it's a U.S. company. However, I, I think they have um, either merged or in a business partnership with Hubson. So, as you know, Hubson is a Chinese company, but all of the customer service, sales, support, etc., is going to be in the United States. Um, and I think that's where EXO comes in in terms of, um, you know, uh, not being a, like a U.S. company and having the manufacturing done by Hubson. And I think in some of their parts, like on the battery, for example, it does have some Hubson logo on here. So there's some, you know, uh, you'll see it in, in some of these things where if you've ever seen a Hubson product before, it looks very similar. Because I think what is going on here is it's a U.S. company. They're in partnership with Hubson for the manufacturing. Because obviously, you know, uh, even if, um, if you look at some other U.S. companies that build drones, like Skydio, of course, they're designed in the U.S., but they're all manufactured in China, just like everything else. So um, if you're wondering about that relationship, I think that's the extent to what I know about it. I don't have any more details. I'm probably going to have a press release about this somewhere and somewhat, at some point later, so check out their website and you'll get some more information about that. But obviously the video is about the drone. This is their under, you know, 250-gram drone, sub-250, which is a uh, pretty hot market right now. I, th I think, you know, recently DJI released the Mini 3, which um, comes in around $900, I think, with their nice remote. This one's going to be coming in around 650 and it has a lot of similar specs. Not quite as um, high-end as the Mini 3, but it's, you know, for those of you that are looking for something in the sub-250 space with similar sort of features, um, this is going to be pretty close. I think that's, I'm, you know, I'm kind of excited about this product. So, obviously, let's start off with just the basics here. Got your 4K camera. Uh, it's a 1 over 1.3 inch sensor. It's the same size sensor as the Mini 3. So it's a little, it's like, you know, so if you don't know how to do the math, it's about uh, three quarters of an inch. So it's much bigger than the ones, the sensor on the um, the Mini and the Mini 2. And it's uh, smaller than the one on the uh, DJI Air 2S, which is a one inch sensor. So it's the same size as the Mini 3, which is great. Uh, I think it's a 1.85 aperture and 84 degree field of view so very very similar specs 4k camera uh, only goes up to 30 frames per second not 60. the bit rate is very high 100 megabits on the low end and you can go up to 200 megabits on the high end i'll show you some samples of that later you can also do 2.7k video at 60 frames per second and also 1080p at 60 frames per second it has things like time lapse active track all that stuff i'll talk about that in more detail a little bit later so, of course, it has a 3-axis gimbal uh, for stabilized video. Just for size comparison, this is my DJI Mini, also sub-250. And you can see, obviously, there's only so, so much you can do in terms of design. It's a very similar type of design, although you can see the motor on the back arm is on top and not on, on like, here it's on the bottom because the arm flips out. Uh, it's a little bit different in the uh, way the arms unfold so that on the Mini, it unfolds like this. But on the uh, Mini Pro, it swings out like this. So unfolding is pretty simple. Put the fold the front arms out first, and then the back arms, and do the same on the other side. So this is what it looks like unfolded. Obviously, you have your folding props. It's all pretty standard. You have some. Obstacle avoidance sensors here on the front. You have some on the back. 
and also on the bottom. And you have optical flow sensors on the bottom as well, so for position hold if you don't have GPS lock. Um, I believe this is, in terms of obstacle avoid, avoiding sensors, this is the same as the Air 2S. Air 2S does not have uh, sensors on the side, which this one does not have as, as well. The battery slides in and out in the back here, like so. It does come with a um, battery charger, you can, you can stick four of these batteries on, uh, discharge one battery at a time, so just like on the other uh, DJI products, very similar. Charges one battery up full, and then and it goes to the next battery. And then to check your charge, you just press the button. You can see the lights up here, three out of four on this one here. But if you want to turn the drone on, and make sure you, the uh, gimbal cover is removed, otherwise you'll damage the gimbal if you power it on with the gimbal cover on. It's just like DJI, short press then long press. So, short press then long press. And of course, you gotta wait for GPS lock, etc. Here's the controller. You can turn this on. Short press and long press. Just come with two real antennas here, and you can put them down or up. Depends on which way you wanna point the antennas at your drone. You can see the display here with all the different telemetry. And I'll show you a little shot here of what it looks like when it's actually connected with it flying. Put the phone here on the bottom like so, and it's uh, spring-loaded. There's a micro USB cable here, goes on the side, and it does come with uh, other cables for other phones, but this one here is the USB-C for my phone. It's pretty long, so uh, you could use it with a tablet or, or some other orientation if you want. The stick ends unscrew, and they go into the bottom here, so if you want to store them away and have this flat, you can do that. Okay, as you can see, we're connected to the drone now. We're in Addy mode. So we got five satellites, even though we're inside. And then when you get a GPS lock, it'll turn into GPS mode, and it'll say, uh, ready to fly. And by the way, I did an unboxing of this when I first got it, and I will link that as a separate video, otherwise this video is going to be way too long. So if you want to see a, an actual unboxing of everything as I unbox it, I'll post that in the video description. So check that out. Um, got your gimbal. Uh, dial here, photo and video buttons here on the top, function button there. You have power button here, return to home over here. This is your F and S button, which is film, normal, and sport mode. So basically, like uh, cinematic video, very slow. Uh, it's film mode, and then there's normal mode, and then there's sport mode. I think the different speeds are like 6 miles per hour, and, and sport mode is up to 20. Miles per hour. I'll put it up on the screen here if I remember exactly, but basically three different speeds of the drone on all axes, both the horizontal axis and also in terms of um, uh, vertical ascent and descent, and also the gimbal. So, yeah, basically, if you want slower, fine control, then go to the film mode. That'll give you a nice, smooth video. So, one thing that's uh, important to note here is there is something over here on the side that kind of looks like a micro SD card slot, but it's not. I think they had um, originally made the mold for the plastic mold for the um, body when, before they changed the design, and they no longer have a micro SD card slot here. There's actually a small sticker that's here. This might change. So it says, mm, memory card cannot be inserted here. Please remove the sticker before flying. It was like right over here. And uh, that's because uh, the memory is now internal in this design. So uh, this one comes with 128 gigabytes of internal storage, and I think they did that because the uh, recording bitrate can be up to 200 megabits. So there's a lot of uh, memory cards out there that can't do that speed. So I think that's why they switched the design so it's internal memory. And uh, I believe there's going to be a version that maybe uh, might be cheaper that comes with um, less memory. I saw something in the manual about a 64 gigabyte version. So um, do want to let you know this is a early production release. Obviously, uh, I'm not allowed to release this video until the embargo is lifted, so what you're seeing here is final version hardware, but the um, some of the videos and stuff you've seen are on uh, not final version software. I believe in the time that I've had this, I've updated the firmware four times for various uh, different fixes, um, better stability, 
Um, I think two of the fixes were for the gimbal. So some of the video you'll see is a little bit shaky, but I was flying it in kind of the limit. Uh, this can take up to 24 mile per hour winds, I believe. And I was flying it at about 15 to 20 mile per hour winds and it was definitely struggling in, in strong winds. And that's because, you know, it's very light and small. So it's not to be, that's not totally unexpected whatsoever. But I just want to let you know that, yeah, this, um, while it is final version hardware you're looking in here, it is um, not final version software that you're seeing some of the video footage from. Okay, so I did want to show you here what the uh, weighs on the scale. And it, mine's coming in at about 243 grams. Um, if you, when you get it out of the box, they'll have this like bottom protector here, which is for... Uh, protecting the sensors on the bottom, depending on where you're going to be taking it off from. So this was originally on here. I think it was on here like this. It snaps on. But I took that off because this this part here weighs about four and a half grams. So yeah, depending on whether or not you want that extra weight or not. Uh, it does have these little feet, so if you're on a flat surface, taking off and landing is not a problem. It won't damage anything here. Um, and it's just lighter weight, but I, as I, as you probably guys already know, I hand launch and uh, hand land all of the, my drones. And uh, so, what what it, what surface you're taking it off from, it doesn't really matter because I'm taking it off from my hand. So my version came with three batteries. I believe there's going to be some other uh, uh, alternative um, SKUs that you can get with uh, maybe one or two batteries. So this one has a 3,000 milliamp hour 2S battery. Um, they're advertising about 40 minutes of flight on one battery, uh, but since I'm flying in more realistic, you know, like real world conditions, you know, with wind and I'm kind of doing a lot of testing, like speed testing, that kind of stuff, flying full throttle, I was getting typically about 25 minutes of flight time. So if you're flying a lot of wind and stuff like that, um, expect less than the, the maximum. So it's what they advertise is basically under ideal conditions, which is you know, just basically like very smooth flying, slow flying, no wind. Uh, and I believe um, also um, there's an option to turn the camera off. So if you're, say for example, if you're flying far away and you don't want the video system using your battery, uh, you can have that off. And that's another thing about this thing I, I noticed is that when you first turn it on, the video system is actually off. And yeah, it's just conserved battery life. I think it's this uh, this bad, this video system uses all, all, quite a bit of energy or enough power consumption, and it uh, it won't turn on until after you take off. So even though you have GPS lock and everything, you're actually taking off without any video. So you have to make sure that you're you have to take it off in line of sight, make sure it's stable, and then about uh, ten to twenty seconds after you take off, the video will kick in. And then you can go ahead and fly. So that's a one thing that's really different about this. Uh, what the way they that they've done their software is that I don't think I've seen any other drone drone do that where it won't give you video before you take off. So something to keep in mind. A little different, something a little different. And then uh, one thing here to note: uh, there's a micro USB port here in the back. This is not for charging, uh, at least as far as I can tell. Uh, this is for taking the files off, and it is USB 2.0. So these, uh, if you're filming a lot of 4K video at 200 megabits per second, the files are pretty big. It does take a fair amount of time. The drone has to be on for you to connect to the internal memory. So you need to have a battery in here with um, enough uh, juice in it so that it has enough time to copy the files off. Uh, I wish it was USB-C and USB 3.0, but this is you know one of the limitations, I guess, of this design. Hopefully they'll, they'll um, fix that in the future. Okay, so just uh, you know, taking a look at the uh, user interface of the app, uh, it's got all your basic controls on here. Um, you know, it, it, like a lot of uh, consumer drones, they'll give you a lot of warnings, and there's some tutorials available. So I'm not going to cover all that in this video, but they're there if you need them. The user interface is very similar to the way DJI looks. So if you're familiar with DJI drones, it'll look very familiar to you. Um, almost all of the uh, functions are in this exact same places. This this uh, drone does have manual camera controls. So um, something I did notice in video mode is that if you're in manual mode, uh, the ISO will only go down to 400, um, whereas in auto mode, it will go down to 100. So um, now, granted, 
I didn't find manual mode that useful on this one because there are no ND filters available for this drone yet. So without ND filters, um, having manual mode isn't super useful anyway. So I pretty much filmed everything in auto mode, which I thought was pretty good. I thought the default settings in auto mode were really good out of the camera. And so for most of the footage you're gonna see is pretty much straight out of the camera. Uh, I think that if you wanted a little bit improved image, maybe reduce the sharpness, which you can adjust. You can adjust sharpness, contrast, saturation, um, white balance, etc. I think I did lock in white balance on a lot of the footage. They have different color profiles like natural, um, etc. I think there's a few other ones on there. I, I think I just left it on natural. That, that one looked the best to me. There is also um, log video available so if you want to use like a basically log video it just looks like to me like basically low basically like uh, reduced contrast saturation and sharpness um i couldn't tell if it you know if it was true log footage or just those settings reduced it looked pretty similar so i didn't uh, that's something i'll have to do some more testing on later but again you know um without any filters it's kind of hard to really push the footage that much anyway in terms of color grading so i didn't really go into that but if you want to see that in a future video if i get indie filters i'll i'll let me let me know in the comments below and i can cover that uh most of the footage i, I recorded was in the hdr video mode which is basically i think gives you the best um dynamic range in terms of like when you're pointing at the sun or away from the sun uh seems like the overall image is just has more balance now if you don't like that hdr look some people don't like that you can turn that off there's also night mode, uh, if you flying in like you know, very low light or dark conditions. Basically, I think it boosts the um, uh, ISO without as much noise. So it does some sort of noise reduction in that. So the image looks brighter um, when you're flying uh, in dark conditions, but it's still pretty decent. It doesn't have a lot of noise, which is pretty good. So definitely in video mode, a lot of features, um, very similar to DJI. You can definitely get a different look on out of your video but honestly auto mode which is a little bit of reduction in sharpness with hdr on that is what i mostly filmed in because it pretty much gave me the best results but you know again i'm you know, probably flashing a bunch of footage up here it, you know you can judge for yourself I, I didn't i don't have any of the newer drones like the mini 3 or any like other brands to compare the video to but this is definitely way better than my mini 3 which is only 2.2 7k video at 30 frames per second at pretty low bit rate so uh, kind of pointless to do a side by side with uh, with a drone that's three years old um but yeah this this video here if you if i if i look at it and and i just kind of compare it to the footage i got out of my air 2s definitely not quite as good as that i think that footage is better but of course i was using indie filters with that drone um it's got a much bigger sensor, so it's really not a fair comparison. And plus, that drone's like almost double the cost. So, um, yes, if you're wondering, in my opinion, the footage on the Air 2S is better, but you're paying double the price and you need ND filters and other things, etc. For what you're paying for this, it's, I think, very reasonable and it's a very, very good video. Now, in terms of the 100 megabits versus 200 megabits here, I'm going to show you like, like, uh, the same scene where I recorded one versus the other and I don't think it's going to come out on YouTube compression anyway but even without the you know if you're looking at the raw footage I think it looks almost the same now I, I think where the 200 megabits of uh, bit rate is going to come in handy is if you're flying fast with a lot of moving objects around and so if you have a lot of uh, detail in the video that's going to be updating quickly then the extra bit rate might come in handy i i still need to do further testing on that one because i i, I need to find like the right situation where i can kind of show what the differences are but based on some of the footage i've i've looked at that's i think where you're going to see some differences it just and it's very very slight because 100 megabits of 4k video at 30 frames per second is already very very good so you got to do some serious pixel peeping like like zooming into 400 percent etc um on the right kind of footage to see if there's any really benefit any real benefit to the 200 megabits of extra bit rate okay so last thing i want to talk about is some of the um uh, smart features like active track 
And it's got all the same basic stuff that you'll see on, on your other DJI drones, you know, uh, following mode, um, active track in terms of like uh, tracing your movements and it'll do like the parallel as well. So I'll just show you some examples here of what it can do. Um, if you want to see specific testing of that, let me know in the comments below. I, I will have a future video, uh, I'll have future videos on this model you know, later on because I think they're going to be giving me some more firmware updates on additional stuff later. So that'll come out in a future video. But yeah, you know, it's got all the, you know, stuff. That if you want to use the smart features, it will basically program it. And it goes and do it, does its droney or like the orbit mode, etc. And then just it does the auto record. So it almost looks exactly the same, and it works exactly the same as what you see on a DJI drone. So obviously they've emulated that interface, that user experience because it works. People like it. So you know why why give some why give people something different that might not be as good? You know just give them something that they're familiar with. And this is definitely. Uh, right up there and works totally fine as far as I can tell everything looks like it was working normally Now granted when you're using these smart features know that your obstacle avoidance sensors um, Aren't on the side. So if you're doing the, some of these side movements, then yeah, you're gonna you might run into some issues um, Crashing into stuff like a tree uh, If you're using these uh, smart features and not realizing that it's going sideways and there's no obstacle avoidance sensors on the side So be aware of that all right, so yeah, that was definitely a lot to cover in this video. I think that's gonna do it for this one. It's pretty long as it is. If I missed anything important that you wanna see, let me know in the comments below. I'll be sure to include that in the next video on this model, because I think this is, for those of you guys that, again, as I said, if you're interested in a non-DGI, you know, GPS camera drone under 250 grams, I think this is the one to get. I don't really, see any alternatives out there that are US based um, that are in this price range that have all of these sort of features so this is definitely exciting in my opinion again uh, the unboxing is down in the video description link in the video description to this um, particular drone now I there might be coupon codes down there I don't know at this time of the recording this uh, this one recording this uh, uh, video if I'll have any or not I might so check the video description if there are and then uh, you'll see what the final price is after you put the coupon code in down in the uh, when you go to their store. All right. So again, let me know what you want uh, want to see in a future video in the comments, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.